All right, on page four of your quiz, we get into simplifying i to a power. So let's analyze this real quick. i means the square root of negative one. So that means if I square i, I'm squaring the square root of negative one. Remember when you have a radical or a square root and then you square it, it's like it just lifts off that square root and you just have negative one. So i squared is negative one. We've already talked about that a little bit. We've used it anyway. i to the third, then, I can think of as i squared times i. So that's negative one times i. So that's negative i. And i to the fourth, I can think of as i squared times i squared, which is negative one times negative one, which is one. So what's happening here is I've got i, negative one, negative i, and one. And then it's gonna repeat because i to the fourth is just i to, excuse me, i to the fifth is just i to the fourth times i. Every time you have i to the fourth, it equals one. You don't have to multiply by one. If I have one times something, then it's just the something. I don't have to write one times it. So this is one times i. i to the sixth is i to the fourth times i squared. So that's one times i squared. This becomes one times i to the third. One times i to the fourth. So it basically repeats and continues repeating. i to the ninth is two i to the fourths and one more i. This is one, this is one, so this is really all it is. Same thing here, this is one, this is one. So basically, it just starts looping. We're an endless loop of everything i to any power greater than one is gonna be one of these four answers. It's gonna be i, negative one, negative i, or one. Depending on the remainder when I divide the exponent by four. For instance, if I divide 10 by 4, 10 divided by 4, hopefully you can see this, it goes 2 times, 2 times 8, 4 is 8. My remainder is 2. So that's why it's going to be the same as i squared, which is negative 1. That happens for all of these. If you figure out what the remainder is, when you divide by four, then you have figured out which one of these your expression is the same as. So, on number 21, I have to figure out what my remainder is when I divide 27 by four. 27 divided by four, four goes in six times, and six times four is 24, so that leaves me with a remainder of three. So this is exactly the same as i to the third, which is negative i. If you have to, memorize these four. It's better if you understand how to get them because then once you forget them, which you will, you can still figure them out again. But go ahead and memorize them for now. Here we go again. Now, keep in mind, I'm not raising that negative to the 10th power. So it's like I've got negative one times i to the 10th. So first I need to figure this out and then I need to figure out how that negative one affects it. i to the 10th, we just talked about a second ago, was i squared. 10 divided by four leaves me a remainder of two. So it's the same as i squared, which is negative one. So I have negative one times negative one, which is one. Next one, negative, again, this is a negative that is not being raised to the 11th power, so it means this. Negative one times i to the 11th. 11 divided by four, it goes twice with three left over. So this is the same thing as i to the third. i to the third is negative i. So negative one times negative i is just i. Okay, here we have negative four times i to the 16th. When I divide 16 by four, I don't have a remainder. That means basically I have a bunch of sets of four. 
So that's 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. So this is just 1. Any multiple of 4 is just 1 in terms of the exponent. So negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4. And last but not least, on number 25, this is a multiple of 4. So this is just 1. This is a multiple of 4. 12 is a multiple of 4, so this is also just 1. i to the 13th. Let's think about that. 13 divided by 4, it goes 3 times with 1 left over. So i to the 13th is the same as i to the 1st, which is just i. So I have 1 minus i plus 1. So that's 2 minus i. If you understand this but are getting them wrong, need to probably try showing more work. Work it out like I am. Show every little sign. If it's just a plain negative, write that as a negative 1. All right, numbers 26 or 26a through d rely on using the complex plane. That's instead of an x and a y, I have the real numbers are left and right. That's the horizontal number line. And my imaginary numbers are up and down. That's my vertical number line. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to graph the A here and the B here if a complex number is explained by A plus BI or described by A plus BI. So for instance, 4i minus 2. The real part is the negative 2. So I go over to negative 2 on the real number line. The imaginary part is the 4. So that's where I go up. Positive 4, so I go up. If it was negative 4, I'd go down. So the negative 2 sends me left 2. This sends me up 4. So left 2, up 4, here it is. Negative 3 plus i was another one. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3, plus 1i one is right here. Negative 2i. How much was the real part of that? The real part of that is 0, so that means don't go to the left and right. Negative 2i is down 2i. It's on the y-axis, so to speak. It's not really the y-axis. It's the imaginary axis. And the number 5 is just a plain real number. There's a no imaginary part, so it's just on the horizontal axis. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's it. On the bonus, the big problem most people had was c squared equals d. Most of you figured out correctly, since 4i equals di, d must equal 4. If c squared equals 4, when I take the square root of both sides, I have to put plus or minus. So c is plus or minus 2. It's not just 2. So that's one of the solutions. And you have to have it. You can't have just part of the solution. It's not complete without both the positive 2 and the negative 2. And that's page 4.